I'm um, just listening for the heart rate, check a little bit for the hydration, check for nice peak mucous membranes. At the Iditarod, the sled dogs are monitored as carefully as Olympic athletes. In fact, 40 vets will perform 10,000 checkups before the race is over. But for the mushers, there's only one doctor. Sven's dog, Spruce, shows signs of respiratory pneumonia. Yeah, I'm bummed, I'm bummed, sure, but you know, now I can't let this get too close to me because the dogs will realize that, oh, shit, dad is bummed, you know. I gotta keep happy. The Iditarod is a race against the clock, and the clock is always ticking. That means the teams are out on the trail 24-7. In the middle of the night, they're coming into the second checkpoint in Squinton. As Lance Mackey approaches the checkpoint, he's in second place. Every musher on the trail has a story to tell, but Lance Mackey's is a tough one to top. Six years ago, a bout with throat cancer nearly killed him. They didn't really know if I'd be able to pull through it. Friends, family, they would bring dogs to the hospital to see me, to visit me. I had an old dog named Angel. Angel was literally my angel. She would uh, make little pawing gestures, uh, just the way she looked at me, you know, and, and, and her loving attitude. She saved my life. The cancer went away, but his bond with his dogs grew. In your name. Lance Mackey. Lance, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I need a parking spot, like, down near somewhere. After nine hours on the trail, Lance takes his first rest. Before long, this place will be overrun with mushing teams. Earlier today, it was a scramble to get the checkpoint ready in time. Try per side is what this shows. And we did, did we do 30 we did 33. last year? 33. And, but then we ended up pulling a lot of bales back in. So we got, how many teams do we have? We got more bales this year. We got more mushers, 96. More mushers. Before a checkpoint becomes race ready, hundreds of volunteers and a squadron of airplanes mobilize. The Iditarod Air Force. Dozens of single-engine planes manned by experienced bush pilots airlift tons of supplies along the trail's checkpoints so that when a team pulls in, they're ready. When the Iditarod Air Force brings out the musher food bags, they all get stacked right here in a big pile, and we are sorting them. The Squintna Darlings come on their snowmobiles with their sleds, and they take them over and alphabetize them. Never the heat, um, sweat the mushrooms use for uh, quickly defrosting all of the food. Fire start. And, yeah, it's their fire Lance has two priorities, feed his dogs and rest his dogs. What mushers choose to feed their dogs varies. It's often a combination. It can include kibble, beef, fish, tripe, or just pure fat. In a day, these dogs can burn 9,000 calories and need to refuel. But Lance's team is not eating. My team's very known for its eating habits. Um, they're enthusiastic about what they do. Coming into Squinton, they had little energy. I mean, they're, they're just flat. It's barely getting going, you know, so everything's stuff. Once they get all used to the routine and dialed in, We'll have something going here, but right at the moment, they're just kind of getting warmed up. Martin Boozer arrives in eighth place. Are you going to stay with us? Yeah. He's staying. Like Mackie, he's going to stay. 
It's part of a proven strategy. Dogs can simply not run a thousand miles without resting. So in the last 30 or 35 years, we have found the best way of running and resting, running and resting. Ready? My rest has come to, you know, 51% and 49% travel. So I know the world record has been set with a more rest than travel time. Dee Dee is right behind him in ninth. Are you staying or going? No, I'm staying. And four-time winner Jeff King follows. Oh. No, 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 Oh, you swacked me, now you're gonna win. That's, it. That's my one good luck swack. Unlike the other leaders, Jeff King has another idea. I packed up and left Squentna. Um, I wasn't there 10 minutes when that had been the plan. You want to sleep in the in the airport in the gate, slumped in a chair? You want a, a feather pillow in a quiet spot at, at the Hilton? The dogs may be tired, but they have a lot to say. Um, as you can hear, it's kind of noisy. Some dogs haven't learned to rest yet in our neighboring team. <laughs> Yeah, keep them happy and relaxed. That's the most important part right now is just keeping them relaxed. High school senior Roan arrives in Squentna and checks in with Dad. You know where we're going next. You feeling good? Good. Every champion has their own game plan. For Lance, it's four hours down for the dogs, then back onto the trail. All right, we'll see you at the road. Yep. His layover has dropped him back to eighth place. Somewhere in the darkness ahead lies rival Jeff King. Time to get back on the trail. It's the first night out on the Iditarod Trail, and the mushers are left to navigate with only headlamps and their dog's instincts. The Alaskan wilderness can be a lonely, scary place at night. The veterans are out front, taking advantage of the frigid nighttime air to run their dogs hard. Up, up, up. Good. But 40 miles back, rookie Rick Holt is struggling just to keep going. That's it, right up. What is going through my mind right now is that the, those guys out in the front have got some serious dog training experience. And I'm feeling more like a dog jockey, like a driver instead of a trainer. I admire their ability to they know what it takes to motivate their dogs and get them to go up and push themselves further. And I'm feeling right now like that's not a skill I have. This school teacher turned his and his family's life upside down to fulfill a lifelong dream. A few years ago, we decided we were going to leave the very steady and good job we had in the Bering Strait School District. We were living right on the Iditarod and decided that we would actually try to make a go of it. I slept in a tent for two months. Yeah, for two months. I'm incredibly grateful for being able to do it. It's... Uh, yeah, it's a once-in-a-lifetime chance to get out there and see. I mean, there's parts of Alaska on the interior there that we've just never seen before. The Iditarod is a test of mental toughness as well as physical endurance. In his dark night of the soul, Rick questions everything. <laughs> 